Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here coming to you from my office at Aqualand. Today is a really cool day. I am going to be checking out that good friend, Bob Krause. His son actually painted this incredible alligator snapping turtle. We've done this before. We've worked with Bob. He has Midland painted turtles that actually nest on his property. He has this beautiful natural lake there and it is loaded with all different types of turtles, but specifically Midland painted. And they actually lay their eggs in and around his property. And this time of the year, there's a whole hatching that occurs. So we're gonna go check these things out. So this is gonna be a really, really cool day. Let's go find Greg. Tell me that's not the jackpot. Come on, come on, look at that. I love my job. <laughs> he gets it. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, oh, no! A bonus! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, you know what today is, right? Oh, yes. It's the annual turtle harvesting, Midland painted turtle harvesting with Bob Krause. Let's go, buddy. Actually, check this out. These are Midland painted. We got two of them. Are yeah, these the ones left over from last year? Yeah, the rest we released. So let's uh, go ahead and outrace some this year, and then we'll release them in that next spring. Sounds let's good. Have some fun. All right. First time I met Bob was building his pond over here. So we'll definitely take a peek at that. But what I'm looking for right now, and for some of the other turtles that might be sunning themselves over here on the logs. Let's see if we can get in a little bit closer here and see them without spooking them. Water quality looks great. A couple big guys out there and some little small ones too. See them sitting right over here. It's a nice little sandy beach that he put in. So a real nice little entry. A beautiful little lake here. Check this out. It's got a nice island right in the middle of it. Canopy. has got some incredible oak trees around the outside perimeter. Love the fact that he's turned it into a wildlife sanctuary. Just a place where animals can be safe as well as have all the necessary components. There's native vegetation around the perimeters. He's got water. He's got nesting sites, forested areas, and he's got other just kind of grassy edges kind of coming down low. So he really has a lot of different habitats here for him, which makes all the difference in the world. Now let's go take a look at the pond over here real quick. Look at this. All the beautiful aqua blues. We got moss going off of everything. I remember building this pond years and years ago. Still looks great. heat in the floors we got special lighting oh, with yeah. timers and everything for all of our turtles and tortoises mm -hmm. when it was all done we then built our home over it oh my god <laughs> i love it where we're at right now we went from captive breeding to many exotic species of tortoises as our experience evolved we got more conservation minded and we started working with domestic species primarily a common turtle called the midland painted turtle and we have them right here in our lake and we have a little pond across the street and we literally have have hundreds and hundreds of babies that we help hatch out yeah. and we head start them here. That's awesome. And this I is love a, it. this is a, one of the tubs right here, the enclosures that we have there's about 150 to 200 babies in here that are only about two weeks old. We give them a chance at life. You put them out in the lake right away and 90% are eaten by either bass or bluegills yeah. or herons or whatever. I believe it. So some of them we actually keep till next spring okay. when they're at least an inch and a half large yeah. and then we release them in local ponds and lakes. And Got it. it. And, and it's so rewarding for us. The results that you've had for the past decade plus of doing this has just been unbelievable. And you're doing this out of your love for nature and for the environment 
environment and teaching and all that stuff. But you know, this type of effort is normally done like on a, on a statewide level or a county or something like that. So what you're doing by yourself is unreal. It's not by myself, Ed. <laughs> it's not. We have educated so many children and yeah. little scout groups and preschoolers and college kids that have come out here. But I don't do it alone. I've got my helper right here. The king. This is Rodolfo. Rodolfo Lopez, he's been with me for about 10 years now and he didn't know the difference between a, a cocker spaniel and a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> Today he tells me what to do. <laughs> I've got to compliment you and I've got to compliment Greg. You know, the Aquascape team has done so much that people don't recognize as far as educating the public to yeah. that exact point. Education is the key. You know that a few of them are going to be biologists, they're yep. going to be conservationists, they're going to be herpetologists, <laughs> and I think we're hitting the home run. I, I couldn't agree more. Females leave the nest here and they converge usually in the middle of May through the end of June and they find the most ideal nesting spot. The female painted turtles urinate, make the ground open up when they lay the eggs, then they leave them, they never see them again. Within 24 hours, the skunks, the raccoons, they smell that, they find that, and they eat those little eggs like popcorn. We have actually put a conservation program together here in Illinois that has put literally hundreds of these baby turtles back into the environment. Awesome. Mm. And it is so enriching and so rewarding to come back a year or two later and see so many family groups yeah. all living in perfect harmony. Awesome. You're, you're a dad many times over, Rodolfo. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it. What we do, find the nest and we put a mesh cover over it and then we put a cage over it locked into the ground. Awesome. And that gives us the guarantee that those little guys are gonna go through the full 100 to 110 day incubation period and they're gonna make it. How many years have you been doing this? Well, on this property, we've been doing it for about 10, 11 years now, Ed. Okay. Maybe a couple of thousand babies we've released wow. over the past 10 years. And yeah. we've got 70 nests this year? 73. 73, wow. which is the most ever, right? Most ever. So we're getting better yeah. at finding the at nests. At finding them and yeah. watching them. And, and it's more competitiveness here. <laughs> they looking. He'll call me on the phone. He says, who's the king? Who's the king? <laughs> who's the king? <laughs> I found two more at the front gate. Lift off that little plug, huh? There you go, perfect. Now take out one clump at a time, Yep. and we'll be there. Now this obviously is a very large adult female because it's a very deep, deep. nest. The eggs are hatched wow. and the youngsters are just mixed in with the soil. <laughs> I <laughs> know. So cute. <laughs> They're cold. They are definitely going to enjoy this warmth. Two, three. All right, we're Beautiful. at five. Number six. There's a number eight. I think that's it. Eight. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah. All right. So they go from the dry, dry, arid ground to the water bucket. Tell me that's not the jackpot. Come on. <laughs> come on. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Incredible. First eight. time in the water. So this nest right here probably hatched out at about the 100 day point. Very good, Ed. You're nice. the winner. I get the next one. Yeah. All right. So we what? had six for me. You had seven for Ed. So come no. on. What's yours? <laughs> it's easy. 40. What? <laughs> Better than Christmas, right? It's so cool. It's Beautiful day out yeah. here. Helping out with conservation. Getting to see turtles. And I saw you have a sign over there, Bob. Your property's uh, certified wildlife habitat? Yes, it is. Awesome. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at they that. are ready to start <laughs> popping out. <laughs> Still hasn't opened his eyes. Ah, oh, I think I only got five. <laughs> you got to realize that this is a very small female that laid this nest. Yeah. Because it's so shallow? Look at the quantity. She could only carry so many eggs. And the larger the turtle, the larger the egg cavity. It's sad that uh, Greg didn't uh, <laughs> do better than seven. <laughs> <laughs> getting more, getting more than that. Well, those are juveniles. Those are from last year and the year before. I'd say those are two, three, four-year-olds. 
And that's a good prospectus because you've got plenty of baby ones so you can see what happens in two or three years because without doing this, these little guys have such a very, very slight chance that they'll make it to adulthood. Whereas this is a very rare sight to see juvenile turtles like this. Usually you might see one but all adults. We're actually propagating the lakes back again the way they should be with these Midland painted turtles. Good feeling. <laughs> It is your papa. <laughs> <laughs> so the first nest we had six, the second nest we had five, the third nest was seven. Seven, so. That's it. Now let's look at this for a second. Mm -hmm. okay. You see this, this is the normal soil. This is the tunnel right oh, here, yeah. this plug. Mm. I can see it. And you can see how she had her legs in here. You take this plug out, because that's what's holding it all together. Now they don't exit through here because it's as hard as a rock. They mm. exit around it. But this right here is what she put in there. The bottom of the plastron, there's no yolk sac whatsoever. So these guys are, have already absorbed like 80 to 90 percent of all the nutrients. So they're ready. Yeah, we got more in here. Yeah. Yeah. More. Yeah. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Mm, Who's nice, the king? Nice. <laughs> Who's the king? Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, oh, no! oh, a bonus! <laughs> Nine. These right here are frozen bloodworms. These are like crack for baby turtles. <laughs> and we have found over the years many, many different types of things to get baby turtles eaten. They will, because they're omnivorous. They'll yeah. eat many different things. However, this right here, they go crazy for. Okay. And we also feed a lot of tilapia, okay. frozen little pellets. and. That's not as expensive. This is pretty expensive. So high protein, basically. High protein, enough. and as they get older, then the, the diet changes to more omnivorous. Omnivorous. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're digging in. <laughs> they're tearing it apart. bucket right there 55 baby midland painted supposedly we got a tank ready to go for us so let's go check it out uh, they're getting it ready as we see them yeah. over here right now <laughs> What do you think, Andrew? 55 those, babies. Are those newborns? They were just came out. <laughs> Absolutely, they're newborns. Jeez. Literally, they just hatched. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> That's fun. Wow, what a day. I mean, and what an incredible experience hanging out with Bob Krause, hanging out with the pond guy, hanging out with Rodolfo. Incredible knowledge, passion for nature. That's what it's all about. That's why I do what I do. I love connecting people with nature, which is really what started the entire Pond Professor page. I want to give you a little bit of that science give you a little bit of information from the experts out there bob has been in this industry for a long long time his entire career has been based upon pet industry and about animals and about teaching people and kids a little bit different for the pond professor out here but i love this stuff i hope you enjoyed it too we'll see you soon <music>